Greetings! I am the Comics Kid 2099 and I'm here to do a topic video. I haven't really done one of these in a long time and one came to me and so I thought since I'm doing all this filming at once for videos that are going to take the span of like a week I thought I'd go ahead and do this one right now. So as you can see from the title of this video this is going to be about the real worldening of fantastical fantasy science fiction stories. You can probably guess what this is about, but basically, if you can't, the idea is you have some sort of franchise or a single story, and it's got lots of science fiction or fantasy elements, or just things that really can't happen in the real world. And then someone else comes along. Usually, this is for something in an open canon type world. So it's not necessarily somebody comes along and wants to tell a Harry Potter story because Harry Potter is a limited thing. Sure, there's several thousand pages of it, but there's a beginning, middle, and end. Usually, I'm talking about something like Superman or Batman or James Bond or King Arthur. Things that don't really have a certain beginning, middle, and end like those stories which don't. And in fact, I'm going to be using all of those as an example here right now. Lots of people, lots and lots of people like to cite John Byrne's Man of Steel as one of the greatest Superman stories of all time. And I have to respectfully disagree. Now, I don't really like reading Superman stories. I like the character of Superman just fine, but when I read Superman stories, I almost always find something fundamentally wrong with the book that just doesn't suit my tastes of what Superman should be. And for John Byrne's Man of Steel era, while there were other things I didn't like about it, one of the biggest things I didn't like was that he real-worlded Superman. I'm not saying that Superman should be, you know, able to juggle planets or something, but I think John Byrne took it too far in the other direction. He even took it so far that he was basically unwilling to even use very fantastical and kind of silly elements like Mr. Mixius Spitlick or Bizarro. Now I know what you're saying, both of those characters do appear under his hand in his run on his stories. But you have a character like Bizarro, and he doesn't actually call himself Bizarro. I'm not even sure if he even speaks when John Byrne does his story with Bizarro. But here's the way he gets his name. Lex Luthor says that this creature before him is so bizarre, oh, forget about it. Yeah, that's how he gets his name. Now, granted, Bizarro is a little bit silly, but I don't care. I'm expecting a little bit of silly when I pick up a Superman story. I don't want it to be so dour and serious and so rooted in the real world. As far as I'm concerned, Superman needs to have lots of super science, lots of just wild and fantastic stories, and you don't really need to be concerned with, oh, Bizarro's name is silly, so we're just going to do a callback to it with Lex Luthor's dialogue that's really trite and contrived. Another good example of this in action is the Daniel Craig Bond movies. Now, I know everyone and their mom is saying that Skyfall is the greatest Bond movie they've ever seen, and I haven't seen it, so I can't argue with that or agree with it either. One thing I really didn't like about Casino Royale or Quantum of Solace is that they took everything I loved about James Bond and just got rid of it. Granted, my favorite James Bond is Sean Connery, and one of the things I liked about the Bond movies he was in was the groovy 1960s feeling that those movies had. I mean, they didn't go completely overboard with it, but you could certainly see where they were going with because these movies were made in the 1960s. But when I see a Bond movie, I expect to see lots of really implausible, crazy gadgets like a car that can eject the passenger seat, or a pin that explodes when you try to use it, or you know, all of Q Branch. Where is all of that in the Daniel Craig movies? Now, again, I haven't seen Skyfall, so maybe it all shows up in Skyfall, but I kinda doubt it. Not to mention, I don't have to see such a realistic depiction of violence that the Daniel Craig movies give us. Again, this is escapist entertainment. I don't come to see James Bond brutally beaten to death by some other guy, or vice versa. I want to see a less realistic version of this non-realistic story. Maybe I'm the only one who thinks this, but there are other examples and I just can't stand it when these things happen. Have you ever seen the 2004 movie Troy? Starring Brad Pitt and Orlando Bloom? I bet you have. It was a pretty big movie when it came out. And I'm sure it's okay for what it is, but the problem is I don't want to see it. 
When I think of the Trojan War, I think of a big, giant, wooden horse that is holding all these soldiers who are going to ambush the bad guys. I think of gods intervening on behalf of man. I think of all this crazy sorcery that's going on behind the scenes. What did Troy do? Troy took away all the cool stuff about the Trojan War. Stuff that, well, that's what makes me want to read and see the Trojan War. So if all you're doing is a straight-up war movie set a thousand years ago, why should I care? Granted, you might say, well, it's not a war movie that's set in the modern day like so many other war movies, but I really do not care. If you take away all the fantastical elements of the Trojan War, which made me care about that mythology, then all you've got is one less fan of that mythology, at least in this version of the story. Another version that's very similar to Troy, a movie called The Last Legion, starring Colin Firth. This movie, much like Troy, takes the King Arthur mythos and removes everything that's really cool and awesome about it. The Sword in the Stone, Merlin, the Lady of the Lake, all of this is basically real-worlded so that it's just a historical war movie that stars people who don't even have the same names as these characters in the King Arthur mythos. Why on earth should I watch this if it's not even trying to be King Arthur? It's like they said, Let's do a King Arthur movie that tries its hardest to not be a King Arthur movie. Fine, make your movie, but I'm not going to watch it. I actually want to see King Arthur when I see a King Arthur movie. <laughs> Weird, huh? The one exception to this rule is the last three live-action Batman movies we've gotten. Batman Begins, The Dark Knight, and The Dark Knight Rises. While I didn't love everything about The Dark Knight Rises, I did enjoy it quite a bit. And you might be saying, oh, but these movies are everything that you just said you hate. They make everything so realistic and boring and all that. Well, first of all, these movies don't actually try to remove all the elements of Batman that I love. And yeah, there's more to Batman than I love than just what I'm going to say. But this movie doesn't try to get rid of Commissioner Gordon, the Bat Signal, Batman flying around with the cape thing, the Batmobile. It doesn't try to remove those elements. It's not like they're trying to do a Batman movie about a billionaire who has a company and barely fights crime. That would be the real world version of Batman, wouldn't it? Not to mention, these movies came on the tail of four movies that, well, to be fair, they weren't very good at all. I know that some people really like the first Batman movie. Some people think that Forever is okay. Personally, I enjoy three-fourths of them quite a bit. And I will go back and I will always watch Batman, Batman Returns, and Batman Forever. But none of those movies, even the ones I enjoy, are good films. And what I really liked about Batman Begins in the Dark Knight is that they provided us with a good story for the first time ever. So even though they did quite a bit more real-world elements in this trilogy, there was also quite a bit that wasn't very real-world. For example, the fear toxin, the weird machine that evaporates water, and then almost everything in The Dark Knight Rises. So yeah, that would really be the exception to the rule, but I'm not even sure if it counts as the same thing, since there's quite a bit of non-realistic stuff that goes on in that trilogy, and it's not like it's overtly trying to remove all this really cool stuff, like Troy, The Last Legion, the Bond movies, you know, things like that. So I'm curious what you guys have to think about this. Do you like it when a franchise takes a well-beloved property and tries to do a realistic, grounded version of that property? Personally, I hate it. But I'd like to see what you guys have to think. But for now, I'm going to go console a girl who's crying in the shower because she watched someone die. I'll see you next time.